Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sat here with Gus. He's feeling a little clingy today, so he's gonna hang out with us during this video. Also, I am wearing a shirt that looks like I'm not. Today we're gonna be talking about weekend tips and overall how to still lose weight, hit your fitness goals when you're eating out because realistically, we can try to not eat out for as long as we can, right? But that usually doesn't last more than three weeks a month birthday parties or your friends invite you to go out. We don't want to be on a weight loss journey where we can't do anything. If I have a specific fitness school, I want to make it as attainable in my life, in my lifestyle as possible. And I don't want to compromise potentially friendships or events or important milestones or even just spending time with people just because of food. And I don't want you to ever feel that way either. So that's why I want to share these tips to just hopefully help and uh, so you can take like a deep breath and understand like it's okay if I eat out and I'm on my fitness journey We can still see progress and lots of progress at that first off I want to remind you guys what my method is when it comes to losing weight gaining weight or hitting a certain fitness goal There's three ways. Let's say we're focusing on losing weight. There's three ways to do it You can manipulate the time that you're eating Okay, so you can restrict the time so that would look like something like intermittent fasting and then the second way is you could restrict a certain food group. So what that would look like is no sugar, no carbs, things like that. And then the last one is gonna be overall calorie restriction. Now with my method that I use with myself and my clients, we skip the top two and go right to the last one because the top two intermittent fasting and food group restriction only work if it ends up putting your body in the last one, an overall calorie restriction or deficit. So that's why I'd rather eat sugar, eat carbs, and eat when I wake up in the morning, just making sure that my overall calorie, my overall calories are in a deficit. If you're doing something like macro counting and you're learning how to do it, what's really cool is nine out of 10 times nowadays in America, you can find the calories on the website, the nutrition information on different restaurants on different restaurants or fast food places. So that's really nice. And in that case, if you're someone who's running around all day and it's not like you just go out to eat once or twice, it's like you have to go out to eat a lot, you can opt for these places that are maybe 1% better, like a Chipotle, for example, or Chick-fil-A and get like grilled food. And you can utilize their macros and calories and just input them into whatever tracking app you're using, Chronometer or MyFitnessPal. And that way, it's just, a part of your day, right? So then it just makes it easier. So that's tip number one. Now the next thing is, I don't want you worrying about when you go out to eat about the food. Like that's the last thing I want you to worry about. So for me, if I am eating really good Sunday through Friday, and then Saturday, Brett and I go on a date night, I'm gonna have an untracked meal. I'm gonna track the whole day as normal, and then I'm gonna get to the restaurant, I'm gonna order something, and I'm gonna order what I want and what I like, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna eat it. I'm gonna listen to my hunger cues. That's another big thing, eating slowly and listening to your hunger cues and realizing maybe the last few bites, I mean, I grew up in a clean your plate household or you can't leave the dinner table, so it was hard to unlearn, but realizing that those last few bites, maybe I don't need them. And then I'll listen to my body, we'll take it home. Maybe Brett will have that for lunch the next day. And we are just still having fun and enjoying our time and not worrying about it, but we're staying on track because the next day we just hop right back into the way we were eating the day before. Another thing that I forgot to mention about the fast food chains and different restaurants is I have a PDF on my website and it's over 30 pages long and it is a macro cheat sheet that you can have and you can save it on your phone. And whenever you go to like Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, Subway, all of those are on there. Olive Garden's on there, uh, Cheesecake Factory. You can go on there and look at different options that you can have that could potentially hit your macros. So that is a nice, easy way to do it. And I'll put that below and I'll link it for you as well. Okay, what do you do if they don't have the calories and macros and you're someone that doesn't want to take that untracked meal because maybe you've eaten out a few times and you really want to just stay on track, you know? you guesstimate, right? So you just do your best. Once you've been tracking for a little while too, it's pretty easy to see like what's four ounces of chicken, you know? So you just do your best. I think it's better to overestimate. So if I type something in like, uh, 
for example, if I got a fish, like a mahi-mahi, literally everywhere you go in Florida has mahi-mahi, you get mahi-mahi, I get grilled with a rice pilaf and some veggies on the side. That's like a common meal that they have down here. I usually try to opt for a protein carb and some veggies. So what I'll do is if it says, if I track it, I'll like either add olive oil, like two tablespoons, cause they always cook in olive oil or butter. And that'll just, it'll look like it's more calories than it is, but it's better to overestimate, especially if you're in a deficit. So you can do that. What do you do around the meal out? What I like to do is just eat the whole day as normal, or if I know that I'm going out, like one of my favorite things to get is sushi. I know I'm getting sushi. I already know what rolls I'm getting and where we're going. So what I'll do is I will kind of change my meals during the day to make sure that I have carbs saved, protein saved, fat saved for when I go get sushi. So if my typical breakfast usually looks like eggs, toast, bacon, and like yogurt with granola and I have like a big breakfast, maybe I'll have a smaller breakfast and more just protein focused. So it'll be like eggs with egg whites with, and then bulk it up with like peppers, onions, spinach, and then have like one piece of toast on the side instead of two with some jelly instead of peanut butter to save calories. That way I'm not starving myself, I'm just banking myself some calories for the end of the night. Now, same goes with like drinking and stuff like that. I just always set the premise beforehand. I am a plan ahead type of girl. Like I wanna know what restaurant we're going. I'm gonna look up the menu beforehand. I'm gonna pick what I want beforehand. And I know it sounds like super crazy, but like that's just always how I've been anyways. Now I just add the extra step of seeing, okay, how many calories are in it, right? So then I can play my day around it. If I'm in a specific phase of my fitness journey where I want to lose weight in X amount of time, right? So that's another thing to think about. It's like, we are being specific because we have a specific goal, but if you're just living your life and wanna be healthy, you don't have to worry about any of this, right? Uh, you could definitely take some of these tips and implement it just to be more mindful and have more intention when it comes to eating out, but you don't need to like do all the extra, extra stuff. You know what I mean? I will set an intention so I know what I'm gonna get to eat. And then when it comes to drinks, I set myself a limit and typically it's no more drinks than three to four per week. So if I wanna stack all of those in one night, sure. Usually, I mean, honestly, I don't even drink that much during the week. I'll probably have like three to four drinks a month, honestly nowadays um just because i don't like the way it makes me feel the next day every time i put him down he barks to come back up so if you think that he's uncomfortable that's what i'm dealing with right now but yeah so set yourself a drink limit and then the thing is if you know at a certain amount of drinks you get a little like blindfolded of the next shot the next yeah, like chip bowl, things like that. Stop yourself before you get there. So for me, that's about three drinks. I'm pretty much a lightweight, like after three drinks, like I'm good to go. So maybe I just won't even let myself get there because at that point I could be like, someone can offer me a shot and I'll be like, yep, yep, let's do it, <laughs> you know? So you have to be mindful of that too. And for me, it definitely is that point. So I just will do like two drinks, feel like kind of good and that's it. And I'll get like a, a yummy drink that I actually like. And another thing is if you're someone that can fit more drinks in, another good rule of thumb is have one fun drink in the beginning. So maybe it's like espresso martini or like a margarita. So you have that fun drink, yummy drink in the beginning, but then all your drinks afterwards have it be a more clear drink. So like a tequila soda with lime, uh, you could do vodka water and put some Mio in it. But again, just be mindful that when we do have too many drinks, our vision gets a little blurry. McDonald's looks real good at the end of the night and those like extra green tea shots also look good. So if you have a strict goal, don't let yourself get to the point where those goggles go on. Biggest thing for me is never not eating just because I have a night out or a dinner reservation or something planned at the end of the day or an event. That is the worst thing you can do for yourself because you're gonna go into it starving and you're gonna go overboard and then you're not gonna feel good. So eat periodically throughout the day, your normal meals. But again, you can do what I said like before with your breakfast, take out some carbs and replace it with higher volume just to make it a little bit more macro friendly for the end of the night and bank yourself some calories. But you definitely shouldn't go into starving yourself. Another little tip is let's say you're going out for breakfast instead of dinner. I know we're talking about the end of the day so much here because it's more common. So if you're like a pancake girl and you love pancakes, 
sometimes I'll like just drink a protein shake before I go out to breakfast. So I, like, I already got my 30 grams of protein, cool. And then I'll go out to breakfast and just like get a pancake. And I don't have to worry about the protein because I had it right before I left. And that's like a fun little tip that I've heard a little while ago. And I use it all the time when it comes to breakfast. Also like protein just costs so much more money. So that's a nice way to save money and also uh, just get the protein in beforehand and enjoy your pancake. Do the same thing when it comes to dinners and nights out too, but usually like dinners, the course is around the protein anyways. Um, but yeah, another thing that I personally like to do is I am a big dessert girl. So I will do, I will, I will usually skip appetizers or just have like a little bit of appetizer, like a taste, and then I'll get my meal and have it not be too carb heavy. And then I'll split a dessert with someone. So like with Brett, we'll split a dessert. And I really enjoy doing that and I don't feel super full afterwards either. So if you're not a dessert person, but you're more of an appetizer person, you can do the same thing, but like the opposite way. So split the appetizer and then get a less carb heavy meal. Like I mentioned before, they do tend to drench on the olive oil and butter. So don't be afraid to just tell your waiter in a really nice way, hey, like, can you not put, or can you please ask the chef to not put too much butter or olive oil on my veggies? I just don't really like the way it tastes. It's a really nice way to do it and you're not lying, you know? So you could do something like that or you could just be strict with it and say like no butter, no olive oil because I don't like it period, you know? they At the end of the day, the restaurant wants you to enjoy your food, they want it to taste good, so that's why they add it in the first place. So if you ask for them not to do it, of course they're gonna do it because like they want to please their guests, hopefully. Okay, let's really quickly talk about buffets and then we're good to go. So when it comes to buffets, I like to do a one plate rule. So I'll have my plate and mindfully I'll divide it into three categories. So one whole half of the plate, I'll try to fill with veggies or salad. So it's one full half and then a quarter with a lean protein source and then the other quarter with a carb source. So that way you have one plate, you fill it up. Obviously don't be like funny and like stock up on the pasta, but try to stick to this because that is a healthy portion size and it can definitely help with maintaining your goals and making tracking a little bit easier because you can visualize that. Biggest thing is to really set those boundaries before. How are you gonna approach it? What are you gonna do? And be really specific with those. So like, if I am going out tonight, I wouldn't just say, oh, I'm gonna try not to drink a lot. I'm gonna say, I'm stopping myself at three drinks, period. You have to set yourself a specific standard and boundary so you stick to it without specific, specific Without specificity, is that the word, Gus? Without that, it's really hard to stick to anything because then the line's blurred, right? So set yourself that standard and stick to it and just get back right back to it the next day. Don't dwell on it. The stress of dwelling on it and like feeling bad about it is gonna be 10 times worse for you than the actual meal was in the first place. So remember that when you're feeling down or if you had french fries the night before, you're fine, you're gonna do fine. Just get right back on track today. You're always one decision away from being back on track. So just remember that. Remind yourself that and enjoy your weekend because you deserve it. It was a long week and you deserve it. Happy Friday. Say bye, guys. Bye.